Welcome back to Getting Started with Unreal Technology. In this video, we're going to talk briefly about the importance of building. Now, this might be something that you've already picked up in some of the previous videos if you followed along with the creation of our simple level, but we just wanted to take a moment and really drive home uh, the importance of why you should build and some of the things that you need to know uh, as you go about the process of building your levels. So let's begin by creating a new level. And this time, we'll go ahead and use additive as opposed to subtractive. So now we have a big space of empty void as opposed to solid mass. So we'll start off by uh, setting up our brush, which is going to be a 1024 by 1024 by 512 room. And make sure you check the hollow checkbox. And what that's going to do is create a brush that actually has some wall thickness to it. And instead of hitting subtract, this time we'll hit add. Make sure the camera is inside this room when you hold down L and click on the floor. And that'll make sure that the light gets placed inside. And now we have a level, and there's an interesting thing about a, an additive level such as this. If we move the camera outside, we suddenly can't see into the level anymore just by the nature of the additive uh, wall. It, right, because it's as though there's faces on the outside as well as the inside. That's right. So let's go ahead and leave our camera inside. Okay, so we have an environment now, and we have, uh, we have some geometry that we can see here in the viewport, but this isn't actually the final geometry or the final lighting that we will see in the game. Is it, Logan? Right. Both of these things are really just previews. The operation of adding this brush to our world has generated something that we can see, but it is more for a preview purpose only. It has done almost like a, uh, a semi-build on its own. It's added some temporary geometry. The light that has been added is being calculated in dynamic mode at the moment. That means it hasn't run through and pre-calculated any kind of shadow information for that light. That's right. And when you play the game, for the most part, whenever possible, you're going to be looking at pre-calculated lighting and shadowing information, which is a lot better on your system because all of that gets calculated before the game actually runs so that you can focus your processing power on making sure the game is behaving smoothly, your characters are doing what they should be, you're shooting the right enemy and things like that. Now, if you want to see the finalized version of the lighting and geometry, you need to build your level. And before we do that, let's go ahead and make this viewport nice and big so everybody can see the difference in what we're about to do. Now, your building options are available up here inside your toolbar. We have build geometry, build lighting, build paths, build cover nodes, which really has nothing to do with Unreal Tournament and you won't be using it ever. It's actually part of another very popular epic game. Uh, you might have played it called Gears of War. And uh, we have build all. And this is going to build everything that it can. Our geometry, our path nodes, and our lighting. So let's go one thing at a time. First off, we're going to build our geometry. And that recalculates all our geometry. It also incidentally does a map check to let you know if we have any problems. And first off, it says uh, paths need to be rebuilt, which doesn't really matter because we don't have any paths in this case. Lighting needs to be rebuilt. Well, that's coming, so uh, that's not a big deal. And then the brush has no material references, which means that it's got this default gray material on it, which is not a problem just for uh, this basic demo. We'll go ahead and close this. Now, our geometry has been built. This is the final geometry, but it's not the final lighting. To get the final lighting, we need to build our lighting. If you click on the Build Lighting button, you get the Lighting Build options. And this allows you to choose what you're building your lighting for. Would you like your lighting to be rebuilt for your BSP surfaces in the level, which you, uh, you have this checkbox set to? In this case, our level is nothing but BSP, so we would definitely want that set to yes. Would you like to build lighting for your static meshes is the next option. Then we have Build Only Selected Actors. Very handy if you want to maybe just rebuild the lighting on a single static mesh. You could just select that mesh, come into this window and just turn off everything but the build only selected actors button or checkbox excuse me we have build only current level so only this level would get built now that's only going to be pertinent if you're doing level streaming and you have several different levels uh, synced up into this level which is not something that we're dealing with right now uh, down from here we have build only change lighting very handy if you have a whole lot of lights across a large level and you don't want to have to rebuild everything you can just rebuild the uh, few lights that you've tweaked or it'll just change the area of effect for that light. Build only levels selected in the level browser. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it's really only pertinent if you have streamed in multiple levels and are cycling through your levels using the level streaming system. And then finally, perform full quality build, which is just kind of a way to turn on the final version of your light maps as opposed to a slightly simpler uh, kind of preview version. Let's go ahead and click OK. And our light maps get encoded. Now, notice we no longer get an error saying that our lighting needs to be rebuilt. So we can go ahead and close this window. And now we are looking at static lighting. As we keep our camera inside so we can see everything. This is the final lighting that we would see if we played the game. As a matter of fact, if we right-click and say play from here, 
This is the kind of lighting we generally see in the game. But there's something important to note here. If I do anything to this light, even if I just nudge it slightly, bink, you'll notice that it suddenly gets brighter. And if we try to play the map again by right-clicking and saying play from here, we get a warning that says lighting needs to be rebuilt. The problem is that we broke our static lighting system by adjusting this light. So suddenly now we need to recalculate that static lighting solution. Well, well what had happened is all of the shadow maps generated for this light were now invalid because they were generated with the light at a specific position. We have now moved that position, so now all of those light maps are invalid. That's right. So we need to rebuild lighting. Let's go ahead and click on the Build Lighting button. We'll click OK, give that just a second to do its thing, and there we go. Now our lighting has been rebuilt. So now let's say we want to add a static mesh into the level. I'm going to go to File, Open here inside the generic browser, which of course I open by clicking on the show generic browser button up in the toolbar. Let's click on open and we'll go into environment and I'll go into ASC deco statue. And there's a really cool static mesh in here of a samurai warrior with a ninja sword. And we'll go ahead and just add that in. So we'll go to add actor, add static mesh, and let's make this nice and big. Let's say let's, so oh, I don't know, maybe five times the size that he was. So he's huge. And there we go. Now he's in place. Let's go ahead and play from here. And notice we can see what's going on now, sort of. Our uh, great big static mesh is completely black. And if you look in the upper left-hand corner of my window, I have a message that says lighting needs to be rebuilt. Again, we have changed something. In this case, we've added a static mesh. And now our lighting solution is, is, has been invalidated by that. At the same time, though, notice here in the viewport, we do see some sort of lighting on our mesh, and that's because we have this generic preview lighting. This is not going to be active in the game. We need to rebuild our lighting once again. So let's go ahead and just click Build Lighting. If we wanted to, in this particular case, we could switch off uh, BSP. We could just build static meshes since there's only one, or we could say build only selected actors, and it would do the same thing because he is selected and he's the only static mesh. So we'll give that a second to build. Click close, and now let's play in the level once again. Oh, and it didn't actually go through. That's a shame. All right, let's just build everything just to be safe, because really when I'm working, what I'll do for the most part is just build everything in there. Right, and especially in this case, since geometry is very simple. That's we'll true. Not to mention, it. and I just hadn't thought of this, we have that shadow on the wall that wouldn't be built anyways. That's true. This, he's going to affect the geometry shadows as well. That's right. So there we go. Now he's got lighting on him. He's got a shadow behind him, which looks really good, by the way. And now we don't get any more errors. So every time you change something that's going to affect the lighting in your level, it could be uh, the placement of a static mesh, even just so much as moving the static mesh just a little bit, that's going to require that I rebuild the lighting because now our entire system is different. The shadow would be in a different place because its uh, position has changed relative to the light. So if we jump back into the level once again, it's going to say we need to rebuild our lighting, and he's now back in complete black, so we need to rebuild everything. Now, uh, lighting is not the only thing you can build. You can also build path nodes. Now, uh, what this will do is this will take any bot navigation path nodes that are in your level, and it'll create the network of navigation that takes place between those nodes. We're not going to talk about that right now. That's something we'll actually cover in a separate set of videos a little bit later on. Uh, let's go ahead and just jump right over to the Build All button. This is what I find myself using... 99.9% .9 of the time, just because it's so much easier. I don't have to click the button twice to go through build lighting and dig through options. Just go ahead and click on build all. Let's close this window. And this is going to take care of everything. It'll start by rebuilding your geometry. Then it's going to build lighting. It'll build your path nodes, fire off any problems that you might have remaining, and there you go. So now we have our, uh, our level rebuilt and we can see everything that's going on. So that's a, a quick look at the importance of building lighting. The last thing I want to talk about is the importance of uh, building geometry when you move brushes. Now this is something that we did kind of mention earlier when we were creating our very simple level. But just uh, as a very quick demonstration, let's go into our cube builder. I'll right click on that and we'll do a, let's say 128 cube. So 128 in all three dimensions. And we'll switch off hollow and click build. And what I'm going to do is put the red builder brush somewhere in the middle of our room. I'm moving my static mesh up into the ceiling. That's not really what I want to do. Let's grab our red builder brush, if it'll let me select it. There we go. And I'm going to put this kind of here in this empty spot in our room. And I'll click the Add button here on our toolbox to add a new piece of geometry into the level. So we can see that uh, our, we have a new hunk of geometry. We would need to build this and build our lighting because something has changed. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just click Build All because that's so much faster. 
and we can go ahead and close. We now have two brushes that have that uh, default material applied. And what I'm going to do is jump over to the brush wire frame view. We'll get the red builder brush out of the way so we can see this brush. And if I move our additive brush over and then switch back over to lit mode, there you go. It looks like we actually have two brushes. I just wanted to remind everybody that if you move a brush, you must rebuild your geometry to make that uh, calculation uh, final so that your world geometry updates. But in this case, as soon as we do that, we will also need to rebuild our lighting because our lighting system would, of course, be different with the placement of that brush. Right. It really does drive home the point, though, that the brushes are really a definition for geometry rather than the geometry itself. And that also is a, a good way to show the importance of the build process, and that is the build rebuilding is done for anything that needs to be compiled or anything that would be too slow to be done in real time. That's right. Because all these calculations that put geometry together and put lighting together can take a significant amount of time. Therefore, instead of uh, interacting with it continuously, you instead use placeholders like brushes and lights to define where everything should be and then feed that off to the engine and let it compile everything in the build process. That's right. So let's go ahead and click on build all and that's going to update our geometry, then our lighting, and if we close, boom, you can see that our, our cube has moved over, our shadow has adjusted as well, and now we could play this map and everything would be good. So there we go, we have our floating box, our statue's still looking nice, it looks like our samurai dude's about to just kill that box, which is great. The very last thing I wanted to mention is that as you've already seen, it's very easy to nudge something or get some object off kilter, like maybe you accidentally bump a light and change its position, which means you lose your entire lighting solution, and in a really big level, that can be a, a problem, because now you have to go back and rebuild everything. So keep in mind the ability to turn on the uh, prevent mouse from being able to move uh, or adjust actors, which is up here inside the toolbox. Once you switch this on, you can no longer move objects around, which can be really useful if you know that you don't want to change anything or maybe you're letting somebody else kind of go through your level and you don't want them to accidentally nudge something. It's a nice way to make sure that nothing gets moved so you don't lose your lighting. Just keep an eye on that button, and if you know you're not supposed to be moving stuff around, go ahead and turn it on because it might save you a rebuild time at some point down the road. So that's going to wrap things up for this video. Again, just kind of driving home the importance of building as a process. You'll be doing it often, so get used to going up there and clicking on your build all, or you know maybe if you just want to build one thing. But again, I use build all for pretty much everything. And that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.